breath, relaxing your inhaling, breathe in, relaxing your exhaling, breathe in. That means you don't uh, verbalize, conceptualize, let the breath flow in and out without saying, I breathe in, I breathe out, without any of these sentences, words, um, you just pay attention to the breath. Then breath becomes slowly, slowly, uh, subtler and subtler and subtler. And then it becomes very calm, relaxing, peaceful breathing. That is what it means. Relaxing the breath. You breathe in and breathe out. Pasam kaya sankara. Kaya sankara means inhaling and exhaling. Sankara means conditioned things. Kaya sankara means inhaling and exhaling because it is uh, partly it is physical, partly it is inhaling and exhaling that brings oxygen to our body to keep it alive and therefore that is a real body conditioner everybody knows even in you are very critically ill you need oxygen that is why even during this covid 19 they try to produce more and more ventilators to bring more oxygen for them to live and oxygen conditions the body. Therefore, the Buddha called inhaling and exhaling body conditioner. And this body conditioner becomes relaxed, calm, peaceful, and you very peacefully breathe in and breathe out. That is what it means. And also, Bhante, uh, is there a state that you, you can feel the in-breath and out-breath completely at all? Or is it wrong to feel that way? In-breath and out-breath, you certainly can notice. Definitely, when you pay attention, you notice inhaling exactly as inhaling, exhaling exactly as exhaling. There is no confusion. You can never become confused with regard to inhaling and exhaling. These two never mix. Inhaling must complete to exhale. Exhale must be complete to inhale. And therefore, these two never mix together. They stay always separate. And therefore, it is very, very easy to notice both inhaling and exhaling. One moment inhaling, next moment exhaling. Yeah. Thank you, Bhante. You are welcome. <clears throat> Now, can you move these pictures? Oh, uh, they can do that. Huh? The people have the option of having a, a picture of themselves uh -huh. or just their name. Yeah. Uh, Bhante, can you also explain uh, Vachi Sankara and Chitta Sankara, if you don't mind? Vachi Sankara, I, I mentioned Kaya Sankara, Vachi Sankara means Vitakka Vichara. That is Vitakka Vichara means uh, you first think and express, think and verbalize. And therefore the, the source of verbalizing is the thought. And when we think, you speak. So Vitakka is... Uh, there are three types of vitakkas, uh, actually six kinds. Uh, Vyapadavisakka, 
काम विटक व्यापार विटक हिंसा विटक उन ज्यादा है नेक्का विटक अव्यापार विटक अविहिंसा विटक दीसा सिख थ्री होल्सम थ्री अनहोल्सम एंड दीज विटक आर जेनरेटेड फ्रॉम द थॉट थिंकिंग एंड देर फोर थिंकिंग इज कॉल वची संकार वची मीन्स वर्ड्स वर्बल वर्बलाइजिंग द वर्बलाइजिंग बिगिन्स इन थॉट एंड देर फोर थॉट्स आर द सोर्स ऑफ वर्बलाइजिंग एंड थॉट्स आर दॉट्स वी थिंक टू डू समथिंग से समथिंग एंड एक्ट थिंक समथिंग and that is why buddha said chetana ham bikave kammang vadami i tell because thinking is kamma that is vachi sankara chitta sankara is sanya vedana perceptions and feelings these two are called chitta sankara okay okay bande thank you again Okay. Do you want me to read it aloud? Yeah. Do you want me to read it aloud? Mhm. Mm If the chitta sankara process is clearly known, is it true that by simply knowing them as they are, that knowing is how we disidentify with them? Yes. Knowing chitta sankara is very important. Once we know chitta sankara very clearly, we can see whether uh, chitta sankara is polluted or clear, clean. Like uh, with greed, hatred, and delusion, when uh, uh, the perceptions and feeling arises. Uh, because of the perception there can be distortion that is called distorted perception they are called vipallas when we look at the mind and uh, uh, we uh, perceive then we can see whether that perception is uh, uh, dominated affected by greed hatred or delusion or non greed non hatred non delusion mm. therefore we can avoid that then feeling feeling is another step depending on feeling we think various things when we feel pleasant feeling there is this desire as underlying tendency when we have unpleasant feeling we have resentment as underlying tendency when we have neutral feeling there is confusion as underlying tendency therefore knowing the feeling and perception or chitta sankara is very important for people who want to develop spiritually through the practice of meditation when we meditate we can very honestly see what is happening in the mind in our perceptions and feelings <clears throat> I think that's all time we have for uh, answering questions this morning. Uh, let us begin our uh, practice so that uh, at the end you can ask uh, more questions. Let me begin with the regular metta meditation as you may have noticed i want to simplify our practice by repeating the same thing over and over as buddha did buddha repeated the same thing for 45 years in many different ways but he conveyed the same message in this it during these 45 years 
so following his example i also try to repeat the same message same three steps of our meditation practice first metta then mindfulness then concentration let us begin with metta may all beings be happy and secure may all beings have happy minds whatever living beings there may be without exception weak or strong long large medium short subtle or gross visible or invisible living near or far born or coming to birth may all beings have happy minds let no one receive another nor despise anyone anywhere neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another as the mother would risk her own life to protect her only child even so towards all living beings one should cultivate a boundless heart one should cultivate to all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness above below and all around unobstructed without hate or resentment whether standing walking sitting lying down or whenever awake one should develop this mindfulness this is called divinely dwelling here not falling into erroneous views but virtuous and endowed with vision removing desires for sensual pleasures one comes new again to birth in the womb These are the thought <clears throat> we must cultivate with whole hearted living must cultivate to wish all those who are suffering to be free from that suffering we cultivate our mindfulness taking looking paying attention to our breath breathe in and breathe out you can very distinctly notice inhaling as inhaling when inhaling completes exhaling begins when exhaling completes inhaling begins and this is the repetition that takes place all day long all our life now we focus our mind on this repetition and then we notice when we breathe in and out we feel the breath you everybody feels the breath and then we mentally perceive the breath although it is not visible but we can feel and perceive mentally then uh, we become we pay attention to it that is our uh, paying attention but this attention also is changing just like the feeling perception change then consciousness changes consciousness goes or awareness becomes clear sometimes sometimes not clear sometimes we are aware sometimes not aware and we have to bring all of them together the the breath while paying attention to the breath as feeling arises be aware of the feeling you cannot notice the breath without feeling you cannot breathe without perception and without attention you cannot notice any of these things but as breath changes feeling changes perception changes attention changes thinking thoughts changes everything changes when we notice these changes there is nothing to excite or agitate get upset 
or cling to everything is doing the same thing changing 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 when we pay attention to these changes slowly and gradually mind body settles down mind settles down and when the mind and body settle down they become relaxed calm noticing that state we breathe in and out then our hindrances greed resentment restlessness and worry sleepiness and drowsiness and doubt slowly subside because we are totally aware awake and mindful we won't let these hindrances get in our way to block our practice our progress so we will get rid of them as they arise then mind is free from hindrances that is the state where we gain concentration with this concentrated state of mind our body feelings perception three three sankharas kaya sankara vachi sankara chitta sankara also become calm relaxed and peaceful then the mind stays concentrated and that is what is necessary this moment and with these few words of encouragement and guidance i stop and you continue your practice Stance Devo Vasa Vasatu Kalena Sasa Sampati Hut Cha Hocha. Can you please give your reflections in the current situation in the world? In Maha Mangala Sutta, what? Maha Mandala Sutta, the stanza Devo Vas Devo Vasatu Kalena Sasa Sampati Hotucha. Pito bhautu loko cha, raja bhautu dhammi ko, in uh, Mahaja maha Mangala Gata, Devo Vasatu Kalena may rain falls in time, Sasa Sampati Hotu cha, may the uh, agriculture be prosperous. Sasambhavase, Devo Vasutukalena Sasambhavase, Raja Bhavatu Dhammi, 
దేవోవసుతు కాలేన సస్వ సంపత్తి పీతో భౌతు లోకోట మే ద వర్ల్డ్ ఓ బీయింగ్స్ బి ప్రాస్పరస్ అండ్ మే ద రూలర్స్ బి రైటెస్ ఓనెస్ట్ and that is the meaning of that stanza let rain come in time let the crops be prosper pro grow well yield high yielding and the people be prosperous and the rulers be righteous raja bhav to dhammi ko may the rulers be here the word raja means the leaders the rulers they can include the whoever lead the country as the first citizen in different countries they have different names and we simply in general wish all the leaders rulers rule be righteous honest that's what it means so bante in the uh uh context of the current situation it's sort of uh sending meta well wishes to society and that uh yes s- sending well wishes right yes that is what we want to do at the at this moment uh, we really want to wish all of them especially those who those victims and those who support them various type of people doctors nurses uh, then they are supporters orderlies whoever do the cleaning and these are really really stressful if a doctor in the past saw a patient for 15 minutes and so 20 patients or 25 patients a day now they have to see a patient in 10 minutes and go to the next person next person perhaps they may have to see 100 patients a day or even more by the end of the day this doctor is very very tired nervous and uh, be very uh, stressful so are the nurses and then uh, orderlies people who come and do all the lower uh, work uh, unprofessional work and uh, hospital cleaning uh, arranging beds uh, bringing medicine uh, bathing patients so many things they do all of them some of them are working over more than 24 hours around the clock and they are some even don't sleep because they have also very wonderful heart they want to get their patients back to normal and therefore they do their best and therefore we must send our metta to those people as well as those patients when the doctors and nurses and so forth are good healthy they can take care of their patients uh, very easily and all those who facilitate their uh, being there must uh, need uh, need our metta we all must wish them plus those who uh, depend on them their families uh, spouses children who cannot go to school no games you know uh, they all are uh, virtual prisoners in their own homes the self uh, uh, coronating 
uh, and uh, therefore um, they also need help. In some places, uh, people provide music, uh, dances, and so forth to entertain these uh, sick people and uh, others who are working very hard play music, religious music, any music. Uh, in Buddhist countries, they play Buddhist music, chant sutras and so forth, just to cheer them up. And we do our part by sending metta to all those people without any uh, distinction all of them must receive our metta. Bhante, the next question is very related to that. Um, uh, during metta meditation, how can we develop genuine feelings, feelings of loving friendliness to everyone, especially not close to oneself? <laughs> so true wishes of metta are generated without any form of discrimination. How does this happen by repetition of words? Not by repetition of words. Repetition of words uh, remind us and stimulate our thinking. Words stimulate our brain and that stimulates our thinking. And uh, then we begin to really genuinely feel, yes, not only my friend, even my enemy needs metta. If uh, my enemy is healthy, my friend will be healthy, I am healthy. If my enemy is vicious, sick, enemy can do a lot of harm. Uh, and therefore, we can wish enemy also to be very healthy, peaceful, so that everybody can be peaceful. So, we must earnestly wish that and we must uh, think very sincerely. My pain is the same as my enemy's pain, my friend's pain. When I am happy, they are happy. So, this way we have to very honestly think uh, without any biases, any prejudice any resentment, uh, we must have a very big heart. We must think, let me have a bigger heart to accept, accommodate all these beings and, uh, into my metta practice. This particularly is not the time to think of any resentment or any animosity, anger and so forth. This is not the time for that. This is the time for all of us to come together as a one living, breathing being who do not want suffering, who all want to be healthy, peaceful and happy. So this has to be done in a very sincere way. Friends, we are not doing this just to please somebody. We are genuinely doing it for ourselves. And then with that wonderful state of mind, we must wish, may all others just like me. I like to be free from affliction, sickness, uh, nervousness and so forth. Exactly like the world, everybody in the world, like the same way we think. Unless somebody is very sick, uh, Masochists like that. Uh, otherwise, every normal person likes to be healthy and peaceful. Even the masochists, all serial killers, need metta. Those who are mentally sick, they are the ones who uh, have this uh, unusual, uh, you know, crime, commit, who commit unusual, un, uh, uh, acceptable crimes. No crime is acceptable. They commit crimes against uh, humanity. 
because they are not well they must be they must we must wish them to come to reality and be well so that they will not cause harm to anybody so this thought we must deliberately purposely cultivate with a firm determination knowing that all living beings like to be healthy peaceful and happy it is not difficult it every time we think of uh, peace and spreading peace to others we feel peaceful if we have loving friendliness towards everybody we feel the loving friendliness towards ourselves so it is a sort of a reciprocal uh, practice so we cannot uh, uh, preclude any person any living being particularly at this time when so many millions of people suffer in almost 182 countries or more yeah um let's see another question uh could you please ex explain the concept of sunyata or emptiness sunyata emptiness you can see only when you meditate otherwise you cannot see sunyata is uh, especially abstaining um, absence of uh, permanent self we use the word self for uh, communication purpose otherwise uh, it it doesn't serve any purpose it is just like uh, 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 today is uh, wednesday today is wednesday no today is 8 uh, wednesday huh? wednesday wednesday today is wednesday can you see wednesday can you smell wednesday can you touch wednesday no saturday sunday monday tuesday and so forth we use these terms just to uh, communicate and make our array uh, plans and so forth and so conventionally we agreed to use these terms for our day to day mundane purposes other than that they have no any anything in it similarly the word i me you he she we use in order to communicate not that i have an i permanent i you have a permanent i and so forth so that way seeing the emptiness of self is called emptiness emptiness in no matter in what uh, tradition uh, sunyata vada or whatever terms people use and make it a, into a philosophy basically primarily uh, in the root sunyata means empty of self that permanent self does not exist that is uh, Uh, what sunyata really mean okay uh, um, do you want one more question yeah okay uh bante how should one deal with frustration during meditation and continue to persevere with the sit even though concentration is not achieved <laughs> good question i see uh sitting uh, you can meditate whether sitting standing walking lying down or whenever awake it is not something that you cannot do if you are bored and tired in sitting by all means you get up and do walking meditation or you may do metta meditation or you may do some other mindfulness meditation metta meditation these are the two that we recommend if uh, uh, you are bored take one section of uh, mindfulness of the body uh, like 
take 32 parts of the body. You memorize it and go through each and every one of them and say to yourself whether it is uh, this particular part, the past, present, future, internal, external, uh, ajyatang or bahida, uh, gross or subtle, low or high, uh, far or near, these parts are going through impermanence and uh, unsatisfactoriness, changing, anichang, dukkang, vipirana dhammam, dhammam khaya dhammam, vaya dhammam, virag dhammam, nirod dhammam, sankatam, paticca sampannam, netang mama, neso ama, sename suhatta, like that, this is the uh, impermanent, unsatisfactory, subject to alter, they are ceasing, disappearing, uh, and condition, condition, uh, then uh, they are neither me nor myself, it is they are not myself. Like that, you uh, you have to remember some of these terms. Uh, at least you must see each part of your body, starting with head, with head, hair, body, hair, nail, teeth, and skin, and so forth. You go inside to part to see the to remember the parts. You may not see all the parts until you are a very good uh, biologist or anatomist and so on. Every average person can uh, visualize or can remember the parts and uh, understand that they, these parts are within you. And each of them is changing, changing, changing. When you develop this meditation, your boredom will disappear because mind becomes very active. It gives some such object to your practice to uh, to stimulate your mind. Uh, then uh, you will, you will overcome your boredom. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> These thirty-two parts you can find in. Satipatthana uh, Sutta, that is the short version or long version. Satipatthana uh, Sutta, uh, one is in Majjhima the other is Devi Nikaya. It's a long discourse on the four foundations of mindfulness, and the other is uh, uh, in the middle discourse of the Buddha, the middle end discourse that is also called. Satipatthana. You can see this list uh, in that. And there is another discourse called Girimananda Sutta in Anguttara Nikaya. And you can see this list of 32 parts of the body. Uh, and then memorize. It is very easy to memorize either in Pali or English. And, uh, and pay attention to each and every one of them, you take one at a time and then go through it uh, and then go to another or take uh, group by group, first five, second five and uh, so on, divide into groups and then uh, meditate. So you can really uh, stimulate your mind uh, using this uh, uh, parts of the body and there this is we are not trying to uh, learn as uh, uh, biologist or scientist uh, microbiologist but we are trying to see their impermanent unsatisfactory selfless nature this is what this is how we use these parts from the totally different angle from biologists or ph physicists and chemists and so forth. Uh, their power, their uh, uh, 
function, their duties, uh, some are different from ours. As meditators, we use all these things only to see impermanent unsatisfactoriness and selflessness in Vipassana meditation, particularly. Hello. So, friend, yeah. Oh, and for those of you who are on iPhones or iPads and can't see the uh, chat box, uh, Doug also recommended a web website called 32parts.com. That is 32parts.com? That's what uh, Doug recommends, uh, okay. 32parts.com. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, good. And uh, so we had to wind this session. Once again, I want to wish all those victims of the COVID-19 and all those who try their best to help them recover from their sickness and bring them back to normal. There are many, many thousands of different type of professional people, unprofessional people, and what do you call, uh, half professional people, full professional and so forth. They all are working very, very hard and they all deserve our metta and wish them all good health. And uh, you have a good day and see you tonight at uh -oh. 7 o'clock. Sadhu, 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.